Chapter 251 Alex and his family watched the rest of the interview quietly. The following questions only asked about Misty personally, so Alex was hardly interested in it. He just didn't stop watching it in case something interesting might pop up. But he was sorely disappointed. After the interview was over, Alex went to the TR shop to check on TMs. Alex, who now has a lot of money, started considering which TMs he should buy for his Pokemon. Though he had noticed that the TMs are no longer as worthwhile as they were before. If a Pokemon has little or no expert rank moves, it is worth having a lot of TMs. But as soon as a Pokemon has enough moves on the expert rank or even on the master rank, it is no longer sensible to use moves that are still on the normal rank. Even if a Pokemon uses a normal rank move that is effective against a Pokemon, the damage is almost the same as an expert rank move that deals normal damage to a Pokemon. Although the super effective normal rank move does more damage, the difference is not that big. Alex had the feeling that the strong gym leader or elite 4 members probably only use moves that are at least on the expert rank. Having more moves is less important than having a few strong moves. But even with that in mind, Alex still wanted to buy a lot of TMs for his Pokemon today. There are still many moves that have some special properties to them that are worthwhile to have or even later to train on the expert rank. Dash Dash, Pokemon, Crobat, LV, 46, Type, Poison, Flying, Ability, Inner Focus, Gender, Male, Potential, Deep Gold, Moves, Absorb, Supersonic, Astonish, Bite, Wing Attack, Confuse Ray, Swift, Haze, Leech Life, Meme Look, Venishock. Innate Talent, Shadow Ball, E, Innate Talent, Fly, E, Innate Talent, Cross Poison, E. TM, Protect, TM, Toxic, E, TM, Taunt, E, TM, Sludge Bomb, TM, Facade, TM, Roost, TM, Substitute, TM, Thief, TM, Double Team, TM, Aerial Ace, TM, Torment, TM, Thief, TM, Steel Wing, TM, Payback, TM, X Scissor, TM, Giga Impact, Dash, Pokemon, Scizor, LV, 46, Type, Bug, Steel, Ability, Technician, Gender, Male, Potential, Deep Gold, Moves, Leer, Quick Attack, Focus Energy, Double Team, Faint, Fury Cutter, Wing Attack, Agility E, Slash, Razor Wind, Iron Defense, X Scissor, Knight Slash, Innate Talent, Roost E, Innate Talent, Metal Claw E, Innate Talent, Brick Break E, TM, Protect, TM, Swords Dance E, TM, Toxic, TM, Thief, TM, Facade, TM, Giga Impact, TM, U-Turn, TM, Sandstorm, TM, Substitute, TM, Safeguard, TM, Light Scream, TM, Return, TM, Aerial Ace, TM, Acrobatics. Dash Dash, Pokemon, Gardevoir, LV, 46, Type, Psychic, Fairy, Ability, Telepathy, Hidden Ability, Gender, Female, Potential, Deep Gold, Moves, Growl, Confusion, Double Team, Teleport E, Disarming Voice, Lucky Chant, Magical Leaf, Heal Pulse, Draining Kiss, Psychic E, Imprison, Future Sight, Captivate. Innate Talent, Disable E, Innate Talent, Calm Mind E, Innate Talent, Dazzling Gleam E. TM, Protect, TM, Shadow Ball, TM, Will O Wisp, TM, Thunderbolt, TM, Thunder Wave, TM, Helping Hand, TM, Focus Blast, TM, Reflect, TM, Light Scream. TM Safeguard, TM Charm, TM Icy Wind, TM Hyper Beam, TM Guard Swap, TM Mystical Fire, TM Psych Up. Dash, Pokemon, Ditto, LV, 43, Type, Normal, Ability, Imposter, Hidden Ability, Gender, Genderless, Potential, Shallow Gold, Move, Innate Talent, Transform E, Dash, Pokemon, Bastiodon, LV, 44. Type. Rock. Steel. Ability. Sturdy. Gender. Male. Potential. Deep gold. Moves. Protect. Tackle. Metal sound. Take down. Iron defense. Swagger. Ancient power. Block. Endure. Innate talent. Rock polish. E. Innate talent. Sleep talk. E. Innate talent. Flamethrower. E. TM. Taunt. E. TM. Rock slide. TM. Rest. E. TM. Earthquake. TM Flash Cannon, TM Substitute, TM Bulldoze, TM Roar, TM Toxic, 
TM Ice Beam, TM Thunderbolt, TM Double Team. Dash, Pokemon, Blaziken, LV, 43, Type, Fire Fighting, Ability, Speed Boost Hidden Ability, Gender, Female, Potential, Shallow Diamond, Moves, Growl, Scratch, Ember, Sand Attack, Heck, Double Kick, Flame Charge, Quick Attack, Bulk Up, Blaze Kick, Focus Energy, Sunny Day E. Perfect Talent Attract E, Perfect Talent Overheat E. TM Protect, TM Flamethrower E, TM Rock Slide, TM Willow Wisp E, TM Poison Jab, TM Solar Beam, TM Dig, TM Facade, TM Helping Hand, TM Brick Break, TM Acrobatics, TM Shadow Claw, TM Low Sweep, TM U-Turn, TM Swift. Dash, Pokemon, Umbreon, LV, 45, Type, Dark, Ability, Synchronize, Gender, Female, Potential, Shallow Diamond, Moves, Growl, Tackle, Tail Whip, Quick Attack, Double Kick, Sand Attack, Bite, Swift, Take Down, Double Edge E, Helping Hand, Charm, Baton Pass, Work Up E, Pursuit, Moonlight, Mean Look, Last Resort, Guard Swap. Perfect Talent Rest E, Perfect Talent Sleep Talk E. TM Toxic, TM Shadow Ball, TM Facade, TM Protect, TM Attract, TM Psychic, TM Substitute, TM Snarl, TM Payback, TM Psych Up, TM Return, TM Taunt, TM Hyper Beam. Dash, Pokemon, Alolan Vulpix, LV, 29, Type, Ice, Ability, Snow Cloak, Gender, Female, Potential, Deep Gold, Moves, Powder Snow, Tail Whip, Roar, Baby Doll Eyes, Ice Shard, Confuse Ray, Icy Wind, Payback, Mist, Faint Attack, Aurora Beam. Innate Talent Hex, Innate Talent Howl E, Innate Talent Blizzard E. TM Protect, TM Hail, TM Return, TM Double Team, TM Facade, TM Substitute, TM Payback, TM Psych Up, TM Toxic. Dash, Pokemon, Shuppet, LV, 29, Type, Ghost, Ability, Cursed Body, Hidden Ability, Gender, Male, Potential, Deep Gold, Moves, Knock Off, Screech, Nightshade, Spite, Shadow Sneak, Willow Wisp, Faint Attack, Hex. Innate Talent Curse, Innate Talent Phantom Force E, Innate Talent Destiny Bond E. TM Protect, TM Calm Mind, TM Toxic, TM Taunt, TM Thunderbolt, TM Psychic, TM Payback, TM Willow Wisp, TM Thunder Wave, TM Dazzling Gleam, TM Substitute. Dash, Crobat, Thief, Double Team, Aerial Ace, Torment, Thief, Steel Wing, Payback, X Scissor, Giga Impact. Scizor, Safeguard, Light Screen, Return, Aerial Ace, Acrobatics. Gardevoir, Reflect, Light Screen, Safeguard, Charm, Icy Wind, Hyper Beam, Guard Swap, Mystical Fire, Psych Up. Bastiodon, Substitute, Bulldoze, Roar, Toxic, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Double Team. Blaziken, Solar Beam, Dig, Facade, Helping Hand, Brick Break, Acrobatics, Shadow Claw, Low Sweep, U-Turn, Swift. Umbreon, Psychic, Substitute, Snarl, Payback, Psych Up, Return, Taunt, Hyper Beam. Vulpix, Hail, Return, Double Team, Facade, Substitute, Payback, Psych Up, Toxic. Shuppet, Calm Mind, Toxic, Taunt, Thunderbolt, Psychic, Payback, Willow Wisp, Thunder Wave, Dazzling Gleam, Substitute. Dash, Scizor, who noticed that he had the fewest moves, looked at Alex unhappily and asked, Why did I get the least new moves? Alex looked at Scizor with a smile. These are all the useful moves I could find for you. The number of moves is not what matters but how strong they are. I think you can understand that. Scizor nodded and started trying out his new moves. Crobat heard the conversation between Alex and Scizor and said to Scizor, Haha, do you really believe what our trainer told you? You really are missing a few brain cells, aren't you? He just didn't want to spend money on the most useless Pokemon in the team. Ha 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 ha. Scizor glared, at Crobat as he said, you fat bastard. 
When Alex realized that Scizor was getting really angry, he said aloud, Scizor, don't believe what Crobat said. Your TMs together cost more than his TMs. Crobat, who heard the words, also stopped smiling and said, what? That must be a lie. Alex took out his TRH device and showed the price for the TMs from Crobat and the price from Scizor. Crobat looked dumbfounded. Scizor looked at Crobat with a mocking face as he said, Oh Tilda you said he didn't want to spend money on the useless Pokemon, right? Ha ha ha, so true, so true. Crobat looked angry and began to insult Scizor. He also said that Alex has probably given the wrong prices and that Alex must be lying to protect Scizor from shame. Asterisk. Alex separated the two and told them to spend their time trying out their new moves. He wanted to buy all the important TMs that were inexpensive or at least worth the price. He didn't buy every good TM for his Pokemon. But after this purchase, he now had gathered most of the important TMs for his Pokemon. There were also good moves such as acrobatics that he hadn't bought for his Pokemon like Crobat because they already had a similar move on the expert rank. Acrobatics s best feature is its damage. But it does less damage than fly on the expert rank, so why should Alex buy this move for Crobat? It makes no sense for him to buy this move and train it on the expert rank. Crobat has many other moves that will give more benefit by bringing them to the expert rank. Unfortunately, a few moves, in particular, were quite expensive, so Alex had spent a lot of money. Moves like Psych Up, Mystical Fire, Guard Swap, Reflect, and Light Screen are very expensive, but Alex bought them anyway. Especially the move Psych Up was bought by Alex for every Pokemon that can learn it. This move, even without being on the expert rank, is extremely useful and can change the direction of a fight in certain situations. All in all, Alex had spent 13,320,200 Pokédollars on all the TMs. He only had 76,490,350 Pokédollars left now, but he didn't think this money was misused. He wants to train many of these moves on the expert rank, and having these moves now can ensure that his Pokémon won't have to train the mediocre moves. Move mastery is a thing that Alex thought about a lot, and he always tried to train his Pokemon moves which are not only good but also have future use. When Alex saw how his Pokemon, trying out their new moves, an idea suddenly occurred to him. He looked at his Pokemon and said, come here for a minute. I have something important to say. Lol. Crobat be like. Fake news. Alex is fake news. You are fake news. Chapter 252. After all of Alex's Pokemon had gathered in front of him, he began speaking, I have important things to announce. First of all, we will start collecting badges in the next few months to take part in the Kanto Champion Tournament in six months. This is the biggest tournament held in the Kanto region, and the higher the place we achieve, the better the price we will get. So let's try our best for this. Apart from that, I have something even more important to say. Vulpix immediately asked with a confused voice, Papa, what can be even more important than that? Alex smiled hearing this, it's nothing new, actually, and maybe some has already predicted what I'm about to say. A tournament will be held after 40 days that is even more important for us than the Kanto Champion Tournament. It is, of course, the Alex Tournament number 3 that I am talking about. Vulpix looked at Alex with her sparkling eyes and asked, Father, what is this Alex Tournament? Alex looked at Vulpix and Shepard and said with a calming tone, this is a tournament to find out who is the strongest Pokemon in our family. But unfortunately, you two are still too young to take part in it. Shepard was sad hearing this. He looked at the floor and started looking depressed. Vulpix also showed sorrow but more of an expression like, why? This is so unfair. HMPH. Alex showed a gentle smile, don't worry. You will be old enough to participate by the time the next tournament takes place, so don't be sad. Your big sister Blaziken and your big brother Bastiodon have only recently gotten old enough to participate in this tournament. This will also be their debut tournament. Then he looked at Umbreon and said with a smile, plus, new family members are now strong enough to make their first appearance, too. Shuppet quickly stopped being sad and went to Alex for another hug. For him, it was only important that Alex likes him and doesn't want to leave him out. Vulpix saw how his playmate got a hug and also started walking in front of Alex. 
Though she continued showing a pouting mouth as if to say, I'm still mad. Scizor and Crobat scoffed when Alex said those words. Although both made fun of Alex's statements, they really regarded this tournament with a high amount of significance. This tournament will decide which Pokemon of Alex's family will hold the title of strongest, which means a lot to both of their pride. Gardevoir and Umbreon showed calm expressions, but Alex could see a boiling determination in their eyes. Blaziken showed pure anticipation and a strong fighting spirit as if she wanted to start right away. In comparison, Ditto and Bastiodon looked calm. Alex could see that neither of them believed that they had any chance to win. Alex looked at the two Pokemon, whose forte isn't one versus one fights, with a thoughtful expression. While neither of them is really weak in one versus one, neither is strong either. Bastiodon, for example, is a Pokemon that is very strong in one versus one against some Pokemon and very weak against some Pokemon. Crobat, for example, would have a tough time fighting against Bastiodon. On the other hand, a fight between Umbreon and Bastiodon is a fight that will probably end in a draw. Maybe if a Pokemon got too tired to use moves, there would be a winner, but that would take a really long time. Even Scizor, who is very strong against Bastiodon, has to be careful to not be hit by the expert rank flamethrower. But because Bastiodon has such a bad SP, Atke and Scizor have the moves Swords Dance and Brick Break on the expert rank, Scizor would still be the favorite in a fight between the two. Gardevoir and Blaziken are the two Pokemon where Bastiodon has almost no chance of victory. Bastiodon would have to be incredibly lucky so that he doesn't meet these two Pokemon in order to win this tournament. Ditto's chance is probably even worse. Although he can copy any Pokemon from Alex's team because they are on the edge of the arena, unfortunately, all the moves of copied Pokemon are only on the normal rank. He's also the lowest level Pokemon in this tournament, which doesn't help either. He has the ability to hard counter any of his opponents, but Alex didn't think it was enough. Though Alex still believes that Ditto has incredible potential. As soon as his transform reaches the master rank, Ditto's primary weakness, all moves staying on the normal rank, would no longer be a hindrance. Dash dash, 40 days later, dash, Pokemon, Crobat, LV, 47, type, Poison, Flying, Ability, Inner Focus, Gender, Male, Potential, Deep Gold, Moves, Absorb, Supersonic, Astonish, Bite, Wing Attack, Confuse Ray, Swift, Haze, Leech Life, Mean Look, Venishock, E. Innate Talent, Shadow Ball, E. Innate Talent, Fly, E. Innate. Talent, Cross Poison, E. TM, Protect. TM, Toxic, E. TM, Taunt, E. TM, Sludge Bomb. TM, Facade. TM, Roost. TM, Substitute. TM, Thief. TM, Double Team. TM, Aerial Ace. TM, Torment. TM, Thief. TM, Steel Wing. TM, Payback. TM, X Scissor. TM, Giga Impact. Dash. Pokemon. Scizor, LV, 47, Type, Bug, Steel, Ability, Technician, Gender, Male, Potential, Deep Gold, Moves, Leer, Quick Attack, Focus Energy E, Double Team, Faint, Fury Cutter, Wing Attack, Agility E, Slash, Razor Wind, Iron Defense, X Scissor, Knight Slash, Innate Talent, Roost E, Innate Talent, Metal Claw E, Innate Talent, Brick Break E, TM, Protect, TM, Swords Dance E, TM, Toxic, TM, Thief, TM, Facade, TM, Giga Impact, TM, U-Turn, TM, Sandstorm, TM, Substitute, TM, Safeguard, TM, Light Scream, TM, Return, TM, Aerial Ace, TM, Acrobatics, Dash, Pokemon, Gardevoir, LV, 47, Type, Psychic, Fairy, Ability, Telepathy, Hidden Ability, Gender, Female, Potential, Deep Gold, Moves, Growl, Confusion, Double Team, Teleport E, Disarming Voice, Lucky Chant, Magical Leaf, Heal Pulse, Draining Kiss, Psychic E, Imprison, Future Sight, Captivate. Innate Talent, Disable E, Innate Talent, Calm Mind E, Innate Talent, Dazzling Gleam E. TM, Protect, TM, Shadow Ball, TM, Willow Wisp, TM, Thunderbolt, TM, Thunder Wave. TM, Helping Hand, TM, Focus Blast, E, TM, Reflect, TM, Light Scream, TM, Safeguard, TM, Charm, TM, Icy Wind, TM, Hyper Beam, 
TM Guard Swap, TM Mystical Fire, TM Psych Up. Dash Dash, Pokemon, Ditto, LV, 45, Type, Normal, Ability, Imposter, Hidden Ability, Gender, Genderless, Potential, Shallow Gold, Move, Innate Talent, Transform E, Dash Dash, Pokemon, Bastiodon, LV, 45, Type, Rock, Steel, Ability, Sturdy, Gender, Male, Potential, Deep Gold, Moves, Protect, Tackle, Metal Sound, Take Down, Iron Defense, Swagger, Ancient Power, Block, Endure. Innate Talent, Rock Polish E, Innate Talent, Sleep Talk E, Innate Talent, Flamethrower E. TM, Taunt E, TM, Rock Slide E, TM, Rest E, TM, Earthquake, TM, Flash Cannon, TM, Substitute, TM, Bulldoze, TM, Roar, TM, Toxic, TM, Ice Beam, TM, Thunderbolt, TM, Double Team. Dash, Pokemon, Blaziken, LV, 45, Type, Fire, Fighting, Ability, Speed Boost, Hidden Ability, Gender, Female, Potential, Shallow Diamond, Moves, Growl, Scratch, Ember, Sand Attack, Heck, Double Kick, Flame Charge, Quick Attack, Bulk Up, Blaze Kick, Focus Energy, Sunny Day E, Perfect Talent, Attract E, Perfect Talent, Overheat M. TM Protect, TM Flamethrower ETM, Rock Slide, TM Willow Wisp ETM, Poison Jab, TM Solar Beam, TM Dig, TM Facade, TM Helping Hand, TM Brick Break, TM Acrobatics, TM Shadow Claw, TM Low Sweep, TM U-Turn, TM Swift. Dash Dash, Pokemon, Umbreon, LV, 46, Type, Dark, Ability, Synchronize, Gender, Female, Potential, Shallow Diamond, Moves, Growl, Tackle, Tail Whip, Quick Attack, Double Kick, Sand Attack, Bite, Swift, Take Down, Double Edge E, Helping Hand, Charm, Baton Pass, Work Up E, Pursuit, Moonlight, Mean Look, Last Resort, Guard Swap, Perfect Talent, Rest E, Perfect Talent, Sleep Talk E, TM Toxic, TM Shadow Ball, TM Facade E, TM Protect, TM Attract, TM Psychic, TM Substitute, TM Snarl, TM Payback E, TM Psych Up, TM Return, TM Taunt, TM Hyper Beam. Dash, Pokemon, Alolan Vulpix, LV, 34, Type, Ice, Ability, Snow Cloak, Gender, Female, Potential, Deep Gold, Moves, Powder Snow, Tail Whip, Roar, Baby Doll Eyes, Ice Shard, Confuse Ray, Icy Wind, Payback, Mist, Faint Attack, Aurora Beam. Innate Talent Hex E, Innate Talent Howl E, Innate Talent Blizzard E. TM Protect, TM Hail E, TM. Return, TM Double Team, TM Facade, TM Substitute, TM Payback, TM Psych Up, TM Toxic. Dash Dash, Pokemon, Shuppet, LV. 34. Type. Ghost. Ability. Cursed Body. Hidden Ability. Gender. Male. Potential. Deep Gold. Moves. Knock Off. Screech. Nightshade. Spite. Shadow Sneak. Willow Wisp. Faint Attack. Hex. Innate Talent. Curse E. Innate Talent. Phantom Force E. Innate Talent. Destiny Bond E. TM Protect. TM Calm Mind. TM Toxic. TM Taunt E. TM Thunderbolt. TM Psychic, TM Payback, TM Willow Wisp, TM Thunder Wave, TM Dazzling Gleam, TM Substitute. Dash, Level Up, Crobat, 1, Scizor, 1, Gardevoir, 1, Ditto, 2, Bastiodon, 1, Blaziken, 2, Umbreon, 1, Vulpix, 5, Shuppet, 5, Dash Dash, Moves That Improved in Moves Mastery, Crobat, Venishok, Scizor, Focus Energy, Gardevoir, Focus Blast, Bastiodon, Rock Slide, Blaziken, Overheat, Umbreon, Facade, Payback, Vulpix, Hex, Hail, Shuppet, Curse, Taunt, Dash, Current Moves in Training, Crobat, Confuse Ray, Scizor, X Scissor, Gardevoir, Reflect, Ditto, Transform, Bastiodon, Toxic, Blaziken, 
Attract, Umbreon, Rest, Vulpix, Extrasensory, Shuppet, Toxic, Dash, Learn New Moves, Blaziken, High Jump Kick, Alolan Vulpix, Extrasensory, Safeguard, Shuppet, Shadow Ball, Embargo, Dash, Author's Thoughts, Joe, I just wanted to explain a few things that might be a bit difficult to understand. If you are wondering why some Pokemon level up faster than other Pokemon, then you just have to wait for the next chapter. I won't explain it here. I want to explain here why some Pokemon have apparently trained more moves on the expert rank in the same period than others. Like Umbreon, Vulpix and Shuppet. As some of you might already know, not all Pokemon started training their moves at the same time and some had already trained one move for several weeks. I have an extra moment that I constantly change so that I am not confused when which move should reach the expert rank. Here is an example of what it looks like. Crobat. Venishock 11. Scizor. Focus Energy 11. Gardevoir. Focus Blast 12. Ditto. Transform, no spoiler, en. I wanna know tt. Bastiodon. Rock Slide 26. Blaziken. Overheat 27. Umbreon. Facade 3. Vulpix. Hex 2. Shuppet. Curse 2. Here you can see how many days it will take until a move is added to the expert rank. The times change depending on the Pokemon's talent or whether it is an innate talent move, etc. Umbreon, Vulpix and Shuppet only needed 2 days, 3 out of the 40 days to get a move on the expert rank. So they trained a second move to the expert rank in the last week of the 40 days. Okay, that's it. I hope a few people understand better why this happened. Chapter 253 during these 40 days, Alex stayed underground in the Pewter City Team Rocket in order to be there when Elise and Daniel returned. In the two weeks Daniel and Elise trained together, it seemed to have gone well because both showed a rather positive opinion about these two weeks. Alex gave Daniel an item of 3.5 million as a reward. He also said that this item was especially effective for the Pokemon species Butterfree. He also told Elise that she had passed the test and was now officially his direct subordinate. During the conversation, Alex again had asked Gardevoir to keep a track of Elise's emotions and update him from time to time. Alex was now sure that Elise was not a spy from the Alliance or any other organization. Alex looked at the info of his Pokemon, and it was the same as yesterday. In the 40 days, Alex had noticed several things that were usually on the back of his mind. The first thing that caught his eye was that Pokemon from level 45 start to level a lot slower than before. Alex had thought that leveling up speed when one enters elite level was slow. But now, even that speed feels super fast. After 40 days, most of his Pokemon only leveled up once, which looks really bad compared to his two weeks on the mountains. Although Pokemon generally levels faster in the wild, the gain of experience becomes lower and lower as more time is spent in the wild. Alex even has a theory why that is the case, though it's just one of his guesses. He had felt the Pokemon in unknown dangerous places, like in the wildness, level up faster than in a place they knew and properly understood the dangers residing there. Alex didn't know exactly why a Pokemon gets such a buff in an unknown dangerous place, but he felt that his theory of buff was true. Maybe the reasons are not, but the effect sure is. The longer a Pokemon stays in an unknown dangerous place, the worse the buff gets. When the Pokemon has understood most of the dangers of a place and has gotten used to feeling it, the buff becomes almost negligible. This explains to Alex why wild Pokemon don't level faster even if they are training in the wild all the time. Alex had the feeling that a Pokemon also needs to train a certain amount of time in a safe zone so that they don't become numb to dangerous training environments. If all you do is experience thrill all the time, nothing is thrilling anymore. But that was just one of Alex's hypotheses, and he doesn't have the slightest bit of evidence to support this theory. Just the feeling when he observed the information of his Pokemon day by day when they were training on the mountain. The Pokemon they fought on the mountain range where he was last with his Pokemon were probably another reason his Pokemon had leveled up so fast. As Alex's Pokemon battled numerous Pokemon at a level higher than them on a daily rate, some even at level 50, it would have been weird if they hadn't leveled up so fast. But even in this area, Alex noticed that the level of progress was getting slower and slower in the last few days. 
Even if the next level up is always more difficult than before, Alex noticed that even the daily progress was a bit lower. But Alex noticed an even more important thing in 40 days. Ditto had leveled up two times, which is not slower than even a shallow diamond Pokemon. For Alex, this was evidence of a theory that he had previously thought possible. Alex was now sure what the two most important factors for the level speed of a Pokemon are, talent, and, level. They are the most important and also the hardest to change factors. Level. After a Pokemon has leveled up, the next level will automatically be harder than the previous level. That is a factor that cannot be changed and is more of a natural law of the Pokemon world. Talent. Depending on the talent of a Pokemon, the Pokemon starts to level more slowly when it has reached a certain level. Every trainer knows about the level factor, and Alex, of course, also knows it. But Alex only now understood how the two important factors react with one another. Alex's theory is explained like this. He first gives a number from 1 to 10 to both factors when a Pokemon has reached a certain level. These numbers should roughly show how difficult these factors make a Pokemon reach the next level. Alex's Ditto and Crobat are taken as an example. Dash dash. When Ditto was LV35 and had silver potential. Level number. 2.5, it is still relatively easy compared to later. Talent. 3.5, Ditto's talent has started to make it difficult to reach the next level. Dash. Crobat LV35 with gold potential. Level number. 2.5. Talent. 1. Dash. A Pokemon at LV35 and have diamond potential. Level number. 2.5. Talent. 1. Dash. When Ditto was LV40 and had silver potential level number five talent six ditto's talent has started to make it difficult to reach the next level dash crobat lv40 gold potential level number five talent one dash a pokemon at lv40 and diamond potential level number five talent one dash in these three examples you can clearly see that talent only at a certain level begins to make the leveling up more difficult for pokemon but even if more talent doesn't make a difference for this level, it doesn't mean that it doesn't make a difference from a certain level onwards. Alex believed that it was the main reason Ditto could keep up with a shallow diamond Pokemon and even leveled up at the same speed. He knew, however, that shallow gold would soon begin to no longer be the value one in terms of talent. Probably from level 45, Ditto will start leveling more and more slowly because of his talent. Or maybe, this will only happen from level 50, but Ditto might not be that lucky. Alex also noticed another thing, or it's more appropriate to say that it's a thing he had thought about a lot. He knew from the beginning that the move Transform is a special move in terms of move mastery. Alex heard that practicing this move to master rank is really challenging and takes a very long time. But he had underestimated how long this time would be. Ditto has been Alex's Pokemon for more than one year and he has been practicing this move ever since then. Not to forget, Transform is an innate talent move. Alex also didn't have the feeling that it would move to Master Rank anytime soon. Ditto with a Master Rank Transform is just too rare in Pokemon Trainer's world for it to happen easily. Fortunately, Ditto is now an s rank Pokemon, and a few years should be enough for it. Dot 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 dot. After all of Alex's Pokemon came in front of him, Alex said with a smile, okay, the Alex tournament number 3 starts today. Because 7 participants are taking part this time, one of you will automatically advance to the first round. I wrote 7 numbers in this box on pieces of paper, and I will now start drawing for the participants. Alex didn't want to cheat his Pokemon in the matchups, so he would draw the number for them. Crobat complained why he was the one to draw the numbers for them, but Alex ignored it. Don't worry. I won't cheat and randomly draw a number. A.N. I will really draw random numbers for the Pokemon so that no one can say that it happens because of the plot if some readers are dissatisfied. Haha. Ha. 1 vs 2. Semi-final. 3 vs 4. Finale. 5 vs 6. Semi-final. 7. Alex said a Pokemon and then pulled a number from the box. He did this 6 times, and the tournament tree had its candidates. Dash dash dash. Crobat, 3, Scizor, 7, Gardevoir, 4, Ditto, 6, Bastiodon, 1, Blaziken, 
5. Umbreon. 2. Dash dash dash. Bastiodon vs. Umbreon. Semi-final. Crobat vs. Gardevoir. Finale. Blaziken vs. Ditto. Semi-final. Scizor. Chapter 254. Alex looked at the tournament tree and suddenly wished that he had created the tournament tree in the first place. The first match itself was gonna be an absolute nightmare. A tank versus a tank. Since both tanks had rest on the expert rank, Alex felt that this fight will probably last longer than all the other fights together. In addition, Scizor got a free ticket, who was not a good pick for the free ticket. He would prefer for Ditto or Bastiodon to get this free ticket. Alex removed all of these thoughts and looked at his Pokemon. He cleared his throat and said out loud, Ahem. Welcome, everyone, to the Alex tournament number 3. After the massive success of the first and second tournament, the organizer has decided to host another tournament. Today, we have 7 incredibly strong Pokemon fighting for the third trophy of this important tournament. For participant number 1, we have Bastiodon, a particularly massive monster of his species, who is the embodiment of the word, tank. Although he doesn't have much experience, he has the strength to defeat every other Pokemon. The participant number 2, Umbreon. A beautiful and almost invincible Pokemon with many attack variations. Although this is her first time in this tournament, she already has experience of fighting alone. She is the solo hunter of our family. On the third place, we have the defending champion, Crobat. A skilled assassin and an all-rounder who hosts many different types of attacks. He won the last time with an unscrupulous hit-and-run tactic. Next, we have Gardevoir. A beautiful and strong fighter. She has supernatural skills and superior intelligence, which makes her the favorite of the audience. Followed up by her, we have Blaziken. Not only is she the best attacker in this tournament, but also a beautiful Pokemon, who can stun many Pokemon just by her looks. For the next participant, we have Ditto. A master of transformation and a skilled fighter. An all-rounder Pokemon that has the most cards in every fight. And last but certainly not the least, Scizor. A melee monster that fights like a warrior that gets stronger in battle with every second passing. He will defeat you if you give him just enough time. All seven Pokemon looked at Alex with different emotions. Many found that Alex's descriptions of some were much more friendly than others. Especially Crobat was slightly annoyed when he heard Alex say, unscrupulous hit and run tactic. Compared to the lukewarm and quiet anticipation of the participants, Shepard and Vulpix were much more passionate. Vulpix looked excited and showed great interest when she heard the introduction from the participants. She cheered for every Pokemon when they were introduced. Shuppet was also excited, even though he wasn't cheering as loudly as Vulpix. Crobat said with a slightly scornful face, he's getting more and more outrageous every tournament. Umbreon looked confusedly at Crobat and asked, why do you say that, brother Crobat? Crobat looked at Umbreon with friendly eyes and said seriously, he not only introduced me badly but also praised all female participants for their beauty. It clearly shows which participants he prefers. Umbreon gave a thoughtful expression and asked with a somber tone, Does Brother Crobat think I'm not beautiful? I thought the words were meant seriously. Crobat looked at the sad expression and said in his mind, Fuck. He often talks to Umbreon about different things, and he has great respect for her. He can relate to her due to her aggressive fighting style which is similar to him. But that was only one of the reasons. He didn't want to make her sad. No, you are beautiful for your species. I just wanted to say that the male members are also beautiful I mean handsome. And that's why I brought up this topic. Crobat quickly came up with an explanation, even though his eyes twitched slightly, when he said, male members are also beautiful. Although he thinks he's very handsome, he doesn't think the other male Pokemon are particularly good looking especially Scizor. Finding good looks in Scizor would be similar to a blind man trying to find clues in a moonless night that, even in the daylight, only Sherlock Holmes can find. The Umbreon was enlightened after hearing Crobat. Oh tilde I understand now. What a misunderstanding. Umbreon gave an apologetic smile, I'm sorry for misunderstanding your words. No problem. But didn't I told you, you shouldn't apologize so much. Ah, I'm sore. Umbreon stopped herself from completing that sentence. It would be a bit shameful to make a mistake just after she said she wouldn't. She didn't want to look bad in front of her family. 
Crobat just looked speechlessly at the Pokémon whom he had often seen beat other Pokémon to death even after they were already unconscious. Dot 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 dot. Alex's Pokémon were in a training place that Alex had booked specially for today. He had already marked the battlefield boundaries and made them a bit smaller than last time. The hit-and-run tactic was too strong at the last tournament, so Alex changed the parameters of the arena size and kept it similar to the Kanto Rookie Tournament. It is still possible to use the hit-and-run tactic, but it was no longer as ridiculously effective as before. Okay, participants 1 and 2, please come forward. Bastiodon and Umbreon both went ahead and took their places. 3, 2, 1, go. Umbreon and Bastiodon started preparing their moves simultaneously. And almost at the same time, both used a utility move. Umbreon used Work Up and Bastiodon used Rock Polish. Alex, who saw this, nodded and thought, this is going to be a long fight. Neither Pokemon started attacking each other for the next couple of moves. After a few more of Work Up and Rock Polish, Bastiodon finally changed the ongoing pattern. Bastiodon suddenly used Taunt which made it so that Umbreon wouldn't be able to use a utility move unless it is on the expert rank. It was a shame that Bastiodon is a level below Umbreon, or he could have made sure that even expert rank utility move couldn't be used. Alex nodded with a smile when he saw Bastiodon's action. Umbreon showed a calm expression and was ready to make a new move. In contrast to stranger Pokemon, where Umbreon can hardly control her emotions, she is calm as a lake in front of her family. Although Umbreon didn't like fighting against her family, she knew that training matches were important to make sure that her family wouldn't be weak and would later suffer in the wilderness. Bastiodon also started preparing a new move with a calm expression. He also finished first and used Metal Sound. Umbreon finished shortly after and used the first attack move in this battle. She used Double Kick as she was fully reinforced by Work Up and Bastiodon, who had a fourfold weakness against fighting moves, felt a lot of pain. Fortunately, he has a monstrous death, or he would have suffered detrimental damage. But even so, he lost 30% HP from this single hit. Bastiodon's expression became serious as he was preparing the next move. When Alex saw this situation, he thought, Umbreon's plan seems to be to force Bastiodon to use rest before he can use all his utility moves. This time both Pokemon were finished at the same time. To the surprise of Alex, Bastiodon used Iron Defense. Although not that impressive, it was a big leap from the previous fight with Steven's Lyron. He talked for many hours with Bastiodon about independent tactics and sometimes let him fight alone in the wildness. Alex felt that his hard work was paying off. Umbreon used Double Kick again and caused a great deal of damage to Bastiodon. After this exchange, both Pokemon started to prepare for moves again. Bastiodon finished first and finally used the expert rank Rest. His injuries immediately healed, but he had fallen asleep. Umbreon, who finished shortly after, used Double Kick and hit Bastiodon lightly. Umbreon knows the weak points of Bastiodon. She wanted to take advantage of Bastiodon being asleep. But she didn't hit the weak point right away. Actually, even if she wanted to, she couldn't. She used this opportunity to make Bastiodon roll over and fall on his side. She didn't hit his weak point but made it possible to reach it for next time. Smart, she used the power of double kick to move Bastiodon, clearing her way to his stomach so that for the next attack, she can hit his weak spot. Knowing where the weak point of a Pokemon like Bastiodon is located is not easy and Umbreon only knows this because Bastiodon is a Pokemon she often sees fighting. One of the biggest advantages Bastiodon species have is that the weak point is not easy to hit, like the head, for example. Bastiodon can only prepare one move while sleeping, and that is naturally the sleep talk. After sleep talk reaches the expert rank, it stops using any random moves. Although the move selection would still be random, it would at least be an expert rank move. Unfortunately, this advantage didn't help Bastiodon as he didn't wake up fast enough and was knocked out by two critical hits. Alex said quietly, Wow, that was a lot faster than I expected. Chapter 255 After the fight came to an end, Alex hurriedly went to Bastiodon and healed him using a super potion. He also gave Umbreon an energy root so that she wouldn't have any endurance issues. Normally, he would heal her, too. But Umbreon had received no damage from Bastiodon, 
so that was not necessary. After a few minutes, with the help of the super potion, Bastiodon woke up. Bastiodon was disappointed that he was defeated, but Alex comforted him and told him that he had fought very well. He had improved a lot, and he just needs to keep this up. He really thinks that, if Umbreon hadn't known the weak point of Bastiodon and therefore caused so much damage so quickly, this fight would be close and really long. Alex looked at the two new participants who had arrived on the battlefield and said, Okay, Gardevoir and Crobat, time to start your fight. Crobat looked at Gardevoir and said with a smug face, Little sister, don't hold it against me. After all, this fight is going to end in my victory. Gardevoir just smiled gently and said, We'll see. Although Alex didn't say anything, he really didn't think that Crobat was the favorite in this fight. In the last fight, Crobat had the advantage of having three more levels than Gardevoir. But this gap had closed down a lot by now. Three, two, one go. Crobat and Gardevoir both started preparing their moves. Crobat moved in the direction of Gardevoir as he prepared the move, and Gardevoir moved away from Crobat. Gardevoir is not a slow Pokemon. But compared to Crobat, she will look a lot slower. Crobat was only meters away from Gardevoir when both Pokemon finished their moves preparation around the same time. Crobat used Toxic and hit Gardevoir, who made a futile attempt to dodge it. Gardevoir used Calm Mind and, almost immediately after that, teleported 80 yards away from Crobat. She was now on the other side of the battlefield's border that Alex had marked. Alex saw that Gardevoir had used a different tactic this time compared to their last fight and showed a slight smile. This time, Gardevoir had quickly recognized her strengths in this fight and used a tactic that gave Crobat little chance to counterattack. Now that Teleport was on the expert rank, making it even faster, Gardevoir could successfully utilize the hidden run tactic against the hidden run king himself. Gardevoir looked at Crobat and started preparing for her next move. Crobat, who had already been in this situation in their last fight, knew that it was best if he kept a distance of 30 to 40 meters to Gardevoir and hit her with a long-range combat move. Thus, even when she uses teleport he would be closer and hardly has to move around to reach her. He was flying quickly in the direction of Gardevoir. Unfortunately, it didn't take Gardevoir long to prepare her move, and she used it immediately even though Crobat was still 50 meters away. If Gardevoir uses any other move, Crobat could easily avoid it from this distance. But Gardevoir had used Psychic, which is impossible to dodge with pure speed. As long as the opponent is within the range of Psychic, the probability of him being hit is almost 100%. And the range of Psychic on the expert rank is now almost as large as the arena. Crobat, hit by this move, suffered a great deal of pain. He had lost more than 30% of his HP, which he hadn't quite expected. Gardevoir, who had landed these hits, started preparing her next move. At least, she pretended that. Crobat didn't notice and used Venishok as soon as he got within range. Gardevoir stopped pretending preparing a move and teleported in less than half a second. It is very annoying for a Pokemon to suddenly cancel a move and even ensures that the Pokemon cannot concentrate for almost a second. But because Gardevoir had only pretended to do so, she didn't have this problem. Crobat's Venishok quickly flew past the targeted place, and Crobat looked surprised. He didn't quite understand how Gardevoir could begin a new move so quickly. But in the middle of the fight, he had no time to think about such stuff. Gardevoir, who had teleported on the other side of the battlefield, immediately started preparing the next move. Crobat looked at Gardevoir with a grim face and suddenly felt that she was really the worst opponent he could meet in this tournament. He flew back to Gardevoir and prepared another move. Gardevoir, who had started preparing her move first, obviously finished first and used Psychic again. Crobat couldn't do anything again when it hit him, and his body started bleeding profusely. He felt that this attack did even more damage than the last one, even if he couldn't understand why. It wasn't a critical hit, so he wasn't sure what could be the reason. But Crobat knew one thing for certain his body won't be able to withstand another hit like this. Gardevoir made the same gesture as the last time when she was pretending to prepare a move. The only difference with this time was that she was actually preparing a move. Crobat didn't have time to think about what happened within less than three seconds. So, despite a bad feeling, 
he used his move as soon as he was within range. He wanted to wait, but to be able to use protect in an emergency, he had to get rid of this move. Psychic is not a projectile and also not a move like Venishok that takes a bit to hit a Pokemon. The move hits a Pokemon almost instantly as soon as Gardevoir executes it, so he did not have enough time to activate his move and also to use protect quickly. Gardevoir showed a surprised expression as a quick Venishok came towards her. She was hit and lost almost 30% of HP from that one hit. Gardevoir does not have a good death, but her SP death is very high, especially with an expert rank Calm Mind buff. But that didn't mean the Crobat didn't cause her any damage. An expert rank Toxic of a poison type Pokemon like Crobat had brought a lot of damage and pain to Gardevoir's body. Above all, the fact that she is weak to poison type moves ensured that poison would cause her a lot of her HP. In this short time, Gardevoir had already lost more than 25% HP from the poison alone. Crobat noticed how Gardevoir's body was gathering psychic type energy, indicating Gardevoir most likely preparing psychic, and immediately used protect. He believed that this time, Gardevoir had really prepared a move, and he was right. Unfortunately, he didn't know what to do after blocking this move. Without his protect, he would be defeated in one hit, and he had no move on the expert rank that hits faster or even hits the same speed as Psychic. Gardevoir understood that too and had not wasted any time in starting preparation for her next move. Crobat reluctantly started preparing a move, too. Though, sadly, he no longer believed in his victory. He just wanted to lose with pride rather than simply surrender. Without surprise, Gardevoir used Psychic to hit Crobat, who sent a projectile Venishok at Gardevoir. Gardevoir was far enough to activate Protect and avoid the hit. She didn't want to take any risks. If somehow it was a critical hit, the match could have ended in a double knockout. Alex saw how Crobat had lost so desperately and just thought, wow, that's a tough counter. Chapter 256 Crobat woke up after a few minutes as the effect of Super Potion that Alex had given him kicked in. Alex looked up at Crobat and said with a comforting voice, I think you understand it very well that you were really unlucky to match up against Gardevoir in the first round, who was like your perfect counter. And Crobat, you fought very well. Crobat, who heard Alex's words of encouragement, gave a look of disdain and said, I don't need your worthless pity. Alex slightly smiled as he said, you know I am telling the truth. Crobat said nothing but felt a bit better despite losing in the first round. He knew that Alex was right. Against Gardevoir, his greatest strength, his speed, is almost useless. Alex and Crobat don't say many nice words to each other. But when one is down, they always cheer each other up. This relationship has many similarities with two very good friends who often make fun of each other. But when someone is in need of help, they are always there, ready to help. As if Scizor couldn't hold it any longer, he went to where Crobat and Alex were and said with a smirk, taunting Crobat, wow. I always knew you were weak but not so weak that you will lose in the first round. You managed to give me a good surprise, ha ha ha. Alex looked at Scizor and mumbled, someone can't read the mood. Crobat immediately got angry and retaliated, shut up number two. You're lucky you got a free loose, or you would lose to me in two seconds. Alex looked at the two and wondered whether they will ever become good friends. Fortunately, the two only do this in a safe situation, like this, and protect each other when it is dangerous. In the mountain chain, both often fought together against strong opponents, and Alex often saw how both protected each other. Of course, they didn't forget to give stupid insults while doing so. Alex felt that actions are really worth more than words. Dot dot dot. Ditto and Blaziken were next up and Alex felt that Ditto had a good chance. One of Blaziken's best moves is Attract and Ditto can totally negate that move. As long as Ditto transforms into a Pokemon who is super effective against Blaziken, Alex would even say that Ditto is the slight favorite with a good tactic. Blaziken has the strongest move in this tournament with the Overheat that is on the Master rank, but that is also not without any weakness. As long as Ditto uses Protect against Overheat, he would be able to block most of the attack. Protect is not strong enough to completely ward off a Master Rank Overheat plus Expert Rank Sunny Day, but it can at least absorb most of the damage. 3, 2, 1, go. 
Ditto transformed into Gardevoir in less than one second and immediately used Teleport to move to the edge of the arena. Blaziken also started preparing a move, and after seeing who Ditto had transformed into, she dashed towards Ditto. Ditto also started preparing a move a little later. Alex saw how Ditto turned himself to Gardevoir and couldn't help but nod. He felt that Ditto had made the best choice. Apart from the obvious type advantages, all the best moves expert and master rank from Blaziken are special moves, like Will-O-Wisp, which are not that effective against Gardevoir. Gardevoir has a worse HP value in this world than in the games but has the ability to teleport in a short time which, according to Alex, is a good trade-off. In addition, her SP, Death, is very good, so she is not a complete glass cannon against Blaziken. Blaziken finished first, and everyone noticed that the atmosphere had suddenly gotten hot, and the sun seemed to shine brighter. After using Sunny Day, she immediately started preparing a new move while rushing towards Ditto. Ditto still needed a good bit of time before he also finished his first move. It used Future Sight. Since all moves are on the normal rank, it was worth using a move like Future Sight that is stronger than Psychic in this situation. Blaziken saw how suddenly a serene, gigantic eye appeared over her head, and she showed a slight confusion. She didn't know much about the moves rarely used by others and never knew that Sister Gardevoir could use such a move, so she didn't know what that move was for. Fortunately, she felt her legs lightened up a bit, and she started running towards Ditto a bit faster than before. The increase in speed was small but still noticeable for all Pokemon and Alex. She also finished her move, Flamethrower, almost immediately. But as soon as she came into attack range, Ditto teleported away. Blaziken was slightly furious but still had a confident expression. She knew that it wouldn't take her long to become as fast as Crobat or even faster, so this teleport tactic wouldn't work for long. Apart from the fact that her attacks are much stronger than Crobat's, she is a slightly better matchup against Gardevoir. She kept a calm composure and started preparing a move again. Blaziken started running again but a little faster this time. While running, she also began to prepare for another move. Her move was finished first, but she was still 50 meters away from Ditto and wanted to use her move from 30 meters to hit Ditto safely and surely. When Blaziken was only 35 meters away, Ditto finally got ready to use Psychic. Blaziken was hit directly by Psychic and her face contorted in pain as she endured the hit. Almost after that, the eye began to light up and exploded over Blaziken. Blaziken was surprised and even lost her balance for a moment. She was confused by the two almost simultaneous hits. She also noticed that these attacks were really powerful and that more than 40% of her HP was gone. She suddenly thought that if those two moves were on the expert rank, she would have been lucky to have around 35% HP. Ditto took advantage of the fact that Blaziken lost her balance and teleported away again. Then it immediately started preparing the next move. Blaziken immediately felt angry at herself and at everything else. She quickly dashed towards Ditto while holding the finished move ready to use any moment. Ditto wasn't finished quickly enough this time, and Blaziken came within range. Although Ditto was finished by the end, it was too late, and Blaziken sent a beam of fire in its direction. Fortunately, Ditto had prepared the move Light Screen and thus greatly reduced the power. Although the Light Screen didn't prevent much damage on the normal rank, it was still a good amount. Ditto only lost a little more than 15% HP from this hit. Ditto didn't wait and used Teleport again. Blaziken began to calm down a bit and also started to think about a tactic. In contrast to many other Pokemon, she had the least experience of fighting on her own. Even Bastiodon has more experience. She didn't know what to do exactly and couldn't think of anything within less than one second. Alex, who saw this, suppressed his wish to scream at her. Ditto can only prepare normal rank moves and therefore can't move. You don't have to run so close every time to hit it, and just silently watched everything. It would be really unfair to Ditto if he helped Blaziken here. Blaziken started running towards Blaziken again. Fortunately, she was almost as quick as Crobat now, decreasing the distance quickly. And because Ditto can only prepare normal rank moves, it needs more time than Gardevoir, and can no longer kite Blaziken. Blaziken's move was even faster this time than Ditto, and Ditto only finished its move shortly afterwards. Ditto was hit by Flamethrower again. 
And since Sunny Day is on the expert rank, it was still active and continued to reinforce the power of Blaziken's fire-type moves. At the same time, a transparent eye appeared over Blaziken. Ditto, this time did not use teleport and readied his next move immediately as it looked at Blaziken. Blaziken was surprised but immediately started to prepare a move. While preparing, she didn't move, but Ditto didn't think about it because Blaziken is now only 5 meters away from him anyway. She felt that Ditto had made a big mistake this time. Surprisingly, Blaziken and Ditto both finished and at the same time. Ditto used Psychic and met Blaziken's attack directly. Blaziken just endured the pain and used Shadow Claw. Although, Shadow Claw does lesser damage than Expert Rank Flamethrower under Sunny Day, despite the opponent being Psychic type, it was different in this case. Gardevoir's Death is much worse than her SP. Death and Light Screen doesn't work against physical moves. Ditto felt a lot of pain and immediately lost more than 35% of its HP, leaving it with less than half of its HP. But Ditto continued to show a composed demeanor and was ready to move forward without teleporting away. Blaziken was satisfied with the damage and immediately prepared another Shadow Claw. Alex, who saw this, knew that the fight was over. And after just a few seconds, Alex's thought was confirmed. Ditto and Blaziken both meet at the same time. The eye above Blaziken's head exploded immediately afterwards, and Blaziken became unconscious without even using Protect. Alex just looked with a stupefied expression, she, really forgot. Chapter 257 Alex quickly went to Blaziken and healed her one with a super potion. After Blaziken woke up, Alex praised her to lift up her spirit. She is the youngest, so it was understandable for her to lose because of the lack of experience. Especially when Alex said, in the next tournament, you will show them how strong you are, he noticed how the fire had lit up Blaziken's eyes again. After praising Blaziken, he went to Ditto to praise him too. He was very proud of Ditto and he himself found a new side of Ditto that he had never seen before. Ditto talent for tactics doesn't seem to be weak and had even increased compared to the last tournament. Although Ditto didn't use any out-of-the-world tactics, Alex felt its sense of planning and understanding of tactics was specially upgraded. It seems all the time getting better in chess had paid off now. Ditto had a good understanding of timing about when to use which moves to get maximum advantage. In spite of it taking longer for Ditto to prepare a move than Blaziken, he had used more moves than her even if you don't count teleport. Not only Alex congratulates Ditto, but all other Pokemon said at least a few nice words. Even Blaziken compliments Ditto for its skill. Ditto, who heard so many compliments at once, flushed and was so shy that it said nothing the whole time. Alex watches this scene with a smile on his face. He really felt the moments like that show their close bond as a family. Everyone understood that Ditto by far is the Pokemon with the worst potential and not particularly strong. That's why all Pokemon wanted Ditto to have his moments where he can shine. And now that that has happened, everyone is trying to sweeten this moment. Dot 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 dot, Gardevoir and Umbreon stood in front of each other on the battlefield. 3, 2, 1, go. Both started to prepare their moves immediately, but neither moved from their place for a while. Then, Umbreon suddenly started slowly walking towards the middle of the battlefield. Gardevoir finished first and used Calm Mind. Then she immediately started preparing it again. Umbreon finished a little later and then used the move Snarl. Alex saw how Umbreon was using this move and couldn't help but want to pat her on the back. Snarl is a dark type move that doesn't only deal damage but also lowers the SP at K of the Pokemon hit by this move. In addition, this move has a ridiculously long range that hits all Pokemon in 360 degrees. This move is impossible to avoid unless the field is big enough to get out of its long range. That was one of the reasons why Alex bought this move. Gardevoir will not only take damage from this move, but her SP at K will also lower the more often she is hit by this move. Umbreon used the move while standing in the middle of the field, fully covering it and sending the wave of power with her as a center, ensuring that the Gardevoir could not avoid this damage. Gardevoir was hit and suffered a good deal of damage, but she didn't let this break her focus. Although she had lost about 20% HP from this one hit, she immediately thought up a counter. Gardevoir suddenly stopped the move she had been preparing and began preparing another move after she had controlled the backlash of stopping the move. 
Umbreon stayed in the middle and prepared another snarl. This time, Gardevoir finished first, even if she was a bit slower than the last time. Gardevoir gave a smile and used Disable. Umbreon, who had almost finished the preparation of her move, felt like all the energy from the move had suddenly vanished. Disable has a lot of restrictions to properly use it. However, not only is Gardevoir on a level higher than Umbreon, but she has also made this move an expert rank to take the full benefit of it. It was precisely because of this that she could disable even an expert rank move of Umbreon. Umbreon looked unaffected by this new development. She used quick attack as she dashed towards Gardevoir and her whole body rammed into Gardevoir. Like teleport or protect, quick attack is a move that hardly needs any preparation time. And just like these moves, this move has a limit. It can only be used once, and then you have to wait a short time until it can be used again. In addition, you can't prepare any other move for following one second, which is a huge con for Alexen, also the reason why he doesn't like to use this move. Not preparing a move for one second may sound insignificant, but a Pokemon usually needs no more than 2.5 seconds to prepare an expert rank move. So, it can give the opponent a big lead in using the next move first. Apart from that, this one second starts only after the user of quick attack has hit the foe or has used up all of its energy. Alex has experimented a lot with this move, and at least on the normal rank, this move seems to be mediocre for Alex. This move is good just to quickly bridge distances, and, even in this case, it is a worse version of teleport. Gardevoir was hit again and sustained a bit of damage. Even against a weak move like quick attack, she lost almost 10% due to her very poor HP value and a mediocre death value. Although Gardevoir had done no harm in the whole fight, she was very confident. After a second, Umbreon started preparing her next move. But Gardevoir, who had been preparing a move for a long time, used the move almost an instant before Umbreon had finished her preparation. Gardevoir's hands started glowing before she used Dazzling Gleam. Umbreon was hit but showed no signs of pain even though she lost more than 20% of her HP after the hit. Shortly afterwards, Gardevoir used Teleport again. Umbreon showed no anger but rather a smile as suddenly her whole body began to glow up. Her body suddenly released black energy that quickly followed Gardevoir. Alex knew immediately the move Umbreon was using. Pursuit. In this world, Pursuit functions very similar yet a bit differently than in the games. As soon as the activation requirements are met, the move is used automatically. It doesn't matter whether the user has not fully prepared it or wants to wait for a bit. In addition, the requirements to activate Pursuit are a bit weird. As soon as a Pokémon manipulates the space, the Pokémon is automatically hit by this move. This can be something like Pokémon teleporting to a place on the field or switching out with a Pokémon who is currently in a Pokéball. It's a powerful move that can be used in tournaments against a Pokémon that can teleport. Gardevoir was hit again and showed a slight surprise. She knew that Umbreon could use this move, but she didn't think Umbreon would make such a gambit. But she quickly composed herself. She felt that she had enough cards to win this fight. Gardevoir immediately started preparing a new move. Umbreon started running in the direction of Gardevoir as she prepared a new move. Gardevoir, who started first and finished first, used Dazzling Gleam, which, just like Psychic, is almost non-dodgeable. Umbreon was also finished, but she was still not within the attack reach. Gardevoir knew that Umbreon was not using Pursuit. She pretended to be making a new move. But in reality, she was waiting for the Umbreon to get close enough so that she could use Teleport, so that she can build a greater distance from Umbreon than if she were to use it now. When Umbreon was only 35 meters away, Gardevoir immediately used Teleport and increased the distance between them once again. Then she started preparing a new move. Umbreon, who had prepared the move Payback, suddenly felt that she had made a mistake. Alex couldn't help but think that it was a shame that Pursuit wasn't on the expert rank. Though Alex never planned to train this move on the expert rank. At least for the near future. The move was just too situational and often useless in a real fight. Umbreon has other moves that are more important to train on the expert rank. Both Gardevoir and Umbreon started preparing their moves. Gardevoir finished first and used Dazzling Gleam. Umbreon was attacked by a beam and was even hit in a vital spot, her head. She suffered a lot of damage, and her head started to bleed. 
But she stayed calm and also used her move, Swift. Gardevoir tried not to evade, instead used her finished move. To Umbreon's surprise, Gardevoir did not use an attack move but calm mind. Umbreon started preparing, rest, because she couldn't take any more damage and didn't want to take a risk of being hit by such a crit hit again. She instantly fell asleep as her wounds began to heal at a visible rate. Gardevoir gave a, victorious smile, she teleported in front of Umbreon and started preparing a move. Umbreon was also preparing, sleep talk, while she was asleep. To Alex's slight surprise, Umbreon finished first and used, work up. Wow. She's really unlucky that this very move was used among all the expert rank moves. Gardevoir finished a bit later and used Guard Swap. The user of this move swaps their def and sp def values with the foe. Guard Swap can only be used within a certain range, and the user has to have at least the same level as the target. Shortly after, she teleported 80 meters away and was preparing another move. This time, Umbreon's Sleep Talk used Facade. But because no Pokemon was in the range, it was cancelled. Gradevoir then started using Calm Mind. After a few moves, Umbreon woke up, but it was too late. Gardevoir had strengthened herself to the max. Umbreon tried to defeat the injured Gardevoir with a couple of Swifts. But Gardevoir took advantage of this and used Draining Kiss as Umbreon couldn't move and gained more HP than she lost due to Swift. In addition, Umbreon suffered damage and even lost more than 25% of HP. Alex, who saw this, said in a low voice, it's over. Chapter 258. As Alex expected, Umbreon could do nothing after Gardevoir had strengthened itself to the max. With Gardevoir healing herself with, draining kiss, negating all the damage inflicted upon her, Umbreon lost. Alex didn't think the Gardevoir had too big of an advantage either. If she didn't have the disable on the expert rank, she would probably lose in a few exchanges with Umbreon spamming snarl all the time. He went to Umbreon, who was unconscious and healed her with a super potion. After Umbreon woke up, she gave a deep sigh. Um, Umbreon, are you okay? Alex asked with concern. Umbreon shook her head and said with a wide smile and a cheerful voice, Ah, yes. I just feel relieved now. Alex was briefly surprised but instantly understood why. Umbreon hates having to fight Alex's other Pokemon. Even if they are training sessions, she doesn't like it. Now that she's lost, she doesn't have to fight one of Alex's Pokemon again. Alex smiled kindly and said nothing more. Dot dot dot. Three, two, one, go. Scizor and Ditto were facing each other this time. They immediately began to prepare their moves the moment they heard the signal. Ditto transformed immediately into Blaziken, and because it has the ability Imposter, it didn't need time to prepare this move for the first time. Imposter works in this world very similar to the games. The only difference is that it resets every 5 minutes and not when Ditto goes back into its Pokeball. This has pros and cons, but Alex thinks that it is more advantageous in the wild and dangerous position. After Ditto transformed into Blaziken, it immediately started preparing a move. But Alex noticed that Scizor still hadn't finished his move and couldn't help but think, is he not using an expert rank move in Terabang? Scizor finished a little faster and used Sandstorm. The battlefield was suddenly engulfed in a small tornado of sand. The sandstorm still wasn't opaque enough yet, though. Thus Ditto could still see Scizor through the sandstorm. Not to miss the opportunity, Ditto sent Will O Wisp in the direction of Scizor. Scizor reacted immediately and used Protect, as if he had foreseen it and calmly proceeded to prepare his next move. Ditto was starting to get anxious as it prepared its next move. Scizor finished earlier, and he used the move Razor Wind not on Ditto but on the ground. It was the tactic that Alex had used with Scizor in the tournament. Just as in the tournament, Scizor combined the ground dust with the sandstorm as the sand. Stream started getting denser and more obscure. Ditto who had finished a bit later, used Will-O-Wisp. But because it could not see Scizor, it sent the move in the direction of where it had last seen Scizor. Alex, who has started training his psychic powers for some time, could locate Scizor in the sandstorm, but only if he tried very hard. Compared to Gardevoir or other psychic-type Pokémon who can easily do that, he's still a long way off, but he was able to keep it up for a bit at least. He knew that Scizor had immediately started moving after he improved Sandstrom's obscurity. Ditto, 
who still didn't know whether its move had hit or not, made a grim face. He noticed that Blaziken didn't know an AoE fire type move. Blaziken can use Rock Slide, but that only deals a normal amount of damage to Scizor. And considering that Ditto's moves are only on normal rank, it knew that it couldn't win against Scizor with that. Ditto felt that it had no other choice left and turned back into its original form. Ditto didn't waste time and immediately started preparing another Transform. Fortunately, Transform is an expert rank move, so it didn't take Ditto as long as it did when using another move. While Ditto was doing this, Scizor was using Swords Dance. But when he realized that Ditto was not using any moves into the hard to see sand stream area, he started speculating what Ditto was trying to do. Gardevoir was fortunately easily visible to Ditto, standing outside of the battlefield, since it was not in the sand stream area where vision was too clouded. After it transformed, it could feel where Scizor was and started preparing a new move. Scizor started to prepare Metal Claw, and he also ran out of the area of the sand stream where you can hardly see anything. He wanted to see what Ditto was up to, to understand the situation better. He would surely be attacked when he goes out. He would also be counterattacking and inflicting damage so that he wouldn't have taken that damage for nothing. Scizor didn't stop at all when he saw Ditto preparing a move as Gardevoir. He dashed in the direction of Ditto with a cold smile. Ditto took too long to prepare the move, and since it couldn't move, it also couldn't kite Scizor. Scizor was in front of Gardevoir and aimed at the vital part of Gardevoir's head. Not the whole head of Gardevoir is a weak point, but only a certain sensitive point that can only be hit either by luck or if Gardevoir's head is still. Ditto knew that too and bent its neck to move its head, trying to avoid the critical hit. Although it cannot move its body, it can still move its head or arms while preparing for the attack. But as if Scizor had foreseen it, he had aimed at the point where Ditto had moved its head. He saw how Ditto reacted and responded accordingly, carrying out a perfect attack. Alex already knew that Scizor could do that, but the fact that he still pulled it off surprised him. What a monster! No wonder Crobat doesn't like to fight Scizor in close combat. Even if Ditto had only moved its head, it was still very difficult to hit the particular spot on the head. Alex has read that the expert rank transform also copies the HP of the target and always thought that it was beneficial. But the HP of Gardevoir in this world is abusively terrible. Ditto, who got a critical hit from a super effective expert rank move, used by a Pokemon who has the advantage of two levels, suffered unbelievable damage. He lost almost 80% of HP from that one hit, and its head started bleeding profusely. Together with the slow damage done constantly by the sand stream, Ditto was in very bad shape. Scizor stayed calm and immediately started preparing another move. Ditto quickly, used teleport and immediately started preparing a move. But when it saw that Scizor didn't move, it suddenly felt uncomfortable. Scizor was faster because Ditto took a bit of time to use teleport and he used his move right away. Alex looked at Scizor with a smile as he figured out which move he had decided to use. Aerial Ace. Ditto, who was still preparing its move, couldn't use Protect and it also didn't have enough time to cancel the current move. Aerial Ace met Ditto, who was already badly injured, and knocked out Ditto with this one final hit. Scizor, who saw Ditto fall to the floor, just said, I'm not so inexperienced that these tricks would work on me. When Scizor was having this cool moment, Crobat suddenly yelled out, with a voice full of sarcasm, Wow Tilda how cool you are to defeat a Pokemon with two level disadvantages. Impressive. Number 2. Scizor's eyes twitched as he gave Crobat a deadly look. Chapter 259. Alex immediately put a stop to the argument between Scizor and Crobat, which was starting to heat up a lot. He didn't want the two of them to fight unnecessarily. Alex first healed Ditto and later Scizor, who still had one more fight left today. Ditto woke up and looked around, slightly disappointed. Ditto knew that it was likely to lose, but it never thought that the battle would be so one-sided. Alex looked at Ditto and praised him to cheer it up as best he could, even if he's not very good at it. Fortunately, the other Pokemon also helped, and Ditto's mood improved a bit. Dot dot dot. Gardevoir and Scizor both looked at each other with calm faces. Alex felt that he had no idea who had more advantage in this fight. Although he hoped that Gardevoir would also win a tournament, he knew that reality is often not what you wish for it to be. 3, 2, 1, 
Go. Scizor and Gardevoir both immediately started preparing moves simultaneously. At once, Scizor started running towards Gardevoir, and Gardevoir started running backwards, away from Scizor. Since Scizor was even slower than Gardevoir, he could not catch up to her as long as she was not at the edge of the arena, where she could no longer run straight in one direction. Both finished their moves, but Gardevoir decided to wait a little bit to activate her move. Scizor used agility the moment he finished preparing it, making him a little faster than Gardevoir. Alex thinks that the move in this world is even better than in the game, even if it seems weaker. Speed can increase the damage in a physical attack if you use the move while charging towards the opponent. It is also easier to avoid moves, giving the user more benefits compared to the games. Against Gardevoir, Scizor needs a lot of speed, or he would fare even worse than Crobat. Gardevoir, who saw Scizor use the move Agility, gave a slight smile as she finally used her already prepared move, Disable. Alex was pleasantly surprised. Disable. She's really lucky that both are now on the same level, and Disable is also on the expert rank. Or else, she wouldn't be able to use it against an expert rank move of Scizor. The Gardevoir preparing this move beforehand was very risky, but Alex thought it was a calculated risk. Scizor has two tactics that he usually uses. From which, the Sand Stream tactic will not work against Gardevoir due to her being able to locate Scizor with her psychic powers. Also, even if he were to use a different tactic, it is almost certain that he will want to use Agility as soon as possible. Scizor, who was preparing another Agility, suddenly noticed that all the built-up energy of his move had suddenly vanished. He grimaced. He felt that he was now in a dangerous position. Fortunately, he had a plan. B. Gardevoir looked carefully at Scizor and prepared a move as well. Scizor stopped and prepared a move. Gardevoir finished first and immediately used Calm Mind. Scizor finished almost at the same time and used Swords Dance. Both Pokemon repeated this two more times without budging from their place. It was as if they agreed that they would reinforce each other first. Gardevoir saw this but showed no expression of fear as she prepared her next move. Although she would take a lot of damage from a metal claw of Scizor with Swords Dance reinforcement, she was not afraid at all. If Scizor can't come within range, he can't hit her with his best move. Even though Gardevoir started preparing her move a little later than Scizor, she finished first as she used Calm Mind again. After that, she did not immediately start preparing a new move but observed Scizor. She wanted to be able to use Protect in an emergency. Scizor coped with his move being disabled by using Aerial Ace. Aerial Ace is also a move like Swift which tracks the targets like a guided missile and only stops after hitting something. Even teleporting won't do anything if you're still within range of Aerial Ace. In addition, Aerial Ace is a physical move and, therefore, many times better for Scizor than Swift especially since Scizor had used Expert Rank, Sword Dance several times. Gardevoir didn't run and prepare to move immediately. She was hit by Aerial Ace and felt that this hit was incredibly painful. The hit took away around 50% of HP, and this was not a super effective move but a normal hit. Although Scizor's ability technician played a significant role in why Gardevoir took so much damage, the main reason was still the multiple uses of Sword Dance by Scizor. With this buff, Scizor simply deals abnormal damage against someone with such poor HP and death. This also showed that Gardevoir would have easily been knocked out in one hit if Scizor had used Metal Claw. Fortunately, he has no means to get within the range after preparing that move. Then she immediately decided upon which move to use next. Scizor did the same, and both Pokemon realized that the fight was now at a crucial point. Gardevoir and Scizor both got ready, and both of them were using a move on the normal rank. A quick beam of flame was sent in the direction of Scizor, who was using his aerial ace. While using the normal rank move, it was impossible for both Pokemon to move for half a second. But Scizor reacted quickly and used Protect to block the flame. Gardevoir also used Protect and also blocked Scizor's attack. Although both Protect were in use, both shields broke, and both Pokemon suffered a portion of the hit as damage. Gardevoir lost 10%, and Scizor lost 25% of HP even though most of it was blocked. Both did not wait a moment and immediately began to prepare for their next move. And again, at the same time, both moves were sent to the opposite sides. 
Scizor's body was enveloped in raging fire, and Gardevoir was severely cut on the upper body by Aerial Ace. Both Pokémon had suffered so much damage that they should have been knocked out by now. But neither showed any signs of falling as they were adamant about winning this battle. Fuck, I thought something like that might happen. Scizor, whose whole body had burn marks and even felt pain trying to move his hand slightly, immediately began to prepare his next and last move. Gardevoir had a very large cut on the upper body and this sore puffed out a lot of blood every second, so her whole body was feeling feeble. But even then, she proceeded to prepare a new move. Alex saw both preparing a move and began yelling loudly furiously, Hey! Are you, too stupid, do you want to die? or else why do you think that you can endure such a fatal hit with exhausted life energy? He saw that both Pokemon were not hearing his words, or they simply did not react. In any case, the situation was very dangerous. He noticed that both of them had taken more harm than expected. Blaziken, Crobat, quick! Alex quickly called the two fastest Pokemon so that they could defend the attack for these two idiots. Fortunately, both Pokemon had prepared normal rank moves, so Blaziken and Crobat had more than enough time to reach Scizor and Gardevoir. Both managed to block the attacks even if they had to take some damage themselves. Alex ran to the battlefield and found both Scizor and Gardevoir passed out after using their move. He healed them with an angry expression. But in his anger, there was also a bit of hidden pride. Both Pokemon were real fighters, even if they overdid it. Chapter 260 I thought you might do something stupid, but this time you outdid yourselves. Gardevoir, if the last aerial ace hit you properly, you could have lost an arm or even your head. Why did you do something stupid like continuing the fight? The same goes for you, Scizor. When that mystical fire hit you at the end, could your body endure this ridiculous heat with your life energy exhausted? Even if you managed to protect your head from the hit, all your organs would be damaged afterwards. Even you would have to spend the rest of your life in bed, that is, if you hadn't already ended up dead. Are you too? After Gardevoir and Scizor woke up due to Alex healing them, they got a scolding of their life from Alex, who was boiling with anger. Scizor or Gardevoir didn't say anything the whole time and didn't even try to talk back against Alex. Alex interrupted his long, teaching, when he saw that neither of the two was saying anything. He rubbed his forehead and said, it's my fault. I should have made a rule for this from the beginning. From next time, as soon as someone has used up their life energy, they will automatically be eliminated. Thus, idiots like you don't try something crazy like what you did in this fight. Scizor nodded and said with a serious yet curious face, Sue, who won? Alex's right eye twitched as he looked at Scizor with rising anger. You, you fucking bastard, do you still have the nerve to ask that now? Are you a gladiator? or else why the fuck do you think this training tournament is more important than your life? You arrogant, stupid, Alex, who had just calmed down a bit, immediately reacted like a cat whose tail had been stepped on. Scizor endured the insult and, teaching, from Alex with a cold face. Even though he didn't say anything, Alex felt like Scizor didn't think he'd done something wrong. Scizor didn't think that it was strange that the life of a Pokemon could end in a fight. When he fought in the wild, every fight was a fight to the death. You win, and you have a chance to survive. You lose, and you would most likely end up dead. Even if he's been a Pokemon of Alex for a long time, he can't quite lose that instinct. Especially fighting in close combat, he feels an unending urge to keep fighting. Alex looked at Gardevoir, who was just looking quietly at the floor and said, and, what's wrong with you? Do you know how dangerous your actions were? And for what? Explain yourself. Gardevoir lifted her head and said with a sincere look, Father, after my last defeat. I was very sad. I really wanted to win this tournament to prove that I am not the same Pokemon as in the last tournament. Alex continued to give an angry and irritated look, Who do you have to prove this to? Gardevoir looked Alex in the eyes and said quietly, To me. It's important to me. Alex said nothing for a few seconds and looked at Gardevoir, who was looking so solemn. He said as he shook his head, Ah, even though you're such an intelligent Pokemon, you are as dumb as Scizor. Alex then looked at Gardevoir and said, If you win this tournament, it doesn't mean you have grown as a Pokemon. And if you lose, it doesn't mean you are mentally the same Pokemon as you were in the last tournament. Your achievement doesn't decide who you are, 
your actions do. I think you should have known that. Have a little more confidence in yourself. Gardevoir looked at her father with moist eyes and gave a bright smile. Alex looked at the two of them and said, this fight is a draw, so this tournament has two winners. Scizor or Gardevoir felt happy at the same time but also a bit disappointed that they couldn't win in the end. After a short pause, he said with a, gentle, smile, but since you've done something so stupid and dangerous, you will have extra training every day for the next two weeks. Don't worry, it shouldn't be impossible for you too. I know your limit. Although Alex said this last sentence in a very calm and even almost saint-like tone, both Gardevoir and Scizor looked fearfully. Somehow, Alex's face looked more like a devil. They knew what it would mean if Alex said something like that with a tone like that. To them, it sounded more like, I will push you two to your limit and won't stop until you drop to the ground. Alex looked at the two Pokemon looking seriously and said with a smile, congratulations. Crobat started laughing out loud when he heard Alex's words and openly showed his amusement. Blaziken wanted to laugh too but suppressed it to not annoy her big sister or big brother, who were always so kind to her. The other Pokemon also showed a smile but did not behave like Crobat. Okay, enough. Tomorrow we're going to the weakest gym leader, so go to bed early after training. We have to wake up early the next day. Brock is not the weakest gym leader in Kanto. But Alex still calls him that because Misty has not yet opened her gym, and Brock is a good bit weaker compared to the other gym leader. He's the only gym leader that Alex thinks he can beat after a few months of training. Brock's strongest Pokemon is only at LV53, which is only 6 levels away from his Pokemon. Even if these 6 levels take a long time to achieve, Alex thinks that after 4 or 6 months, he can bring most of his Pokemon to level 50 and then defeat Brock's strongest team with good tactics.